You know, I've talked about the big lies the media tells us. Uh, I want to just knock down one lie we've been telling ourselves. It's probably the biggest lie of all, which is that we are helpless, that we just can't do anything. And then unless the president says everything we want him to say and does everything we want him to do in the exact order we want him to do it, well, then we just suck, you know? <laughs> Nothing we can do. That is the most insidious lie. And that's the lie that's taken us from hope to heartbreak. Uh, the idea that this movement that we've been a part of, that we built up uh, over all these years for hope and change is somehow dead or ever could be, that's the biggest lie. And we've got to now take responsibility for standing up. You know, our opponents have been pretty noisy, uh, but they actually represent a pretty small slice of America. They're pretty small compared to us. The media, I know you don't believe me, because you look on TV, you don't see it. You know, the media was all impressed. They had 150,000 people, remember that? 2009, September, they had 150,000 people in Washington, D.C., and the media was all impressed. We had 150,000 people in the streets of Madison, Wisconsin alone. We had 150 there. Come on. Where's the love? We had thousands of people marching on, on Wall Street yesterday. We had 20,000 people marching down Wall Street three weeks ago. We've got people demonstrating from Ohio to Montana. Why? Because the number of people who need change and who are seeking change and beginning to stand up and demand change is bigger than ever. Don't ever let the mainstream media ignoring this rising tide make you think that we don't exist. In fact, we are seeing a movement to defend the American dream rising. Our slogan was never, yes, he can. <laughs> that wasn't the slogan. I believe it was, yes, we can. Yes, we can, and we still can. So that's what we're here tonight to talk about. Now let me tell you what we're gonna do. Let me tell you what we're gonna do. Yeah, let me tell you what we're gonna do. Oh, they done, they wrote us off too soon. They wrote us off too soon. We are going to rebuild the American dream starting tonight. Starting tonight, we are launching a national movement with incredible organizations like MoveOn.org, the Center for Community Change, the Campaign for America's Future, the SEIU, the AFL-CIO, and many other patriotic organizations. And what we're going to do, we're going to find the best ideas in our country. See, we don't believe DC's got all the ideas. We think you've got some ideas. We think Americans have way better ideas than the stuff we're hearing about on TV every day. And once we find those solutions, we're going to do everything that we can to make sure DC takes them seriously. Now, in fact, we've already got some amazing suggestions. Let me tell you about them real quick. Don't tell Americans we're broke and we're helpless and we can't do anything. Here's an idea. How about this? How about a gambling tax? on Wall Street, huh? How about a gambling tax on them folks on Wall Street, huh? How about we get just one-tenth of a penny? I'm not greedy, see? Just one-tenth of a penny on every one of those lightning trades, you know, where the Wall Street guys sit there and they have the computer and the computer, they got their feet up, and the computer, these hardworking guys got their feet up, and the computer, is doing a thousand trades per second. A thousand trades per second. And we say, well, you can't tax rich people, you might discourage them. How you discourage, how do you discourage an algorithm? Help me understand how we're gonna discourage an algorithm by taxing speculation on their lightning trades. I think the New York Times said we could take billions of dollars off of Wall Street just with that little tiny tax and use it to help rebuild America. Don't tell us we're broke. Don't tell us we're broke. Here's another good one. How about we roll back those Bush tax cuts on the wealthy? How about that? How about that? Don't tell us we're broke. Don't tell us we're broke. I'm sick of it. 
That would save us $80 billion with a B just over the next two years. Just doing that. Don't tell us that we're broke. Look, last night we heard that we're bringing some of the troops home. How about we wind these wars all the way down, bring them all home, huh? Bring them all home and use that $3.3 billion a year. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I read that wrong? No, I'm sorry. $3.3 billion a week. Every week that we're spending over there in Iraq and Afghanistan. What if we use that money to rebuild infrastructure and roads and schools and put people to work here in America? Don't tell us we are broke, okay? How about, how about we take some of the billions we give to, oh, I don't know, Halliburton, right? And other semi-shady military contractor type people. Right? Don't wanna just pick on them and start paying to send every soldier to college like my dad got to go to college and create a veterans corps. How about a veterans corps? These, it's good to bring these folks home. What do we bring them home to? Don't bring them home to no jobs. Don't bring them home to no hope. Don't bring them home to 17 suicide attempts a day. Do something for, us, for them and don't tell us that we're broke. How about we cut some of these subsidies that we're given to these big oil companies. How about that? How about we take some of those dollars, huh? And use that money to train our young people. We have a whole generation of young people graduating off a cliff every spring into the worst economy in two generations. How about we train those young people, take the money from those oil companies, train those young people to put up solar panels and build wind farms and retrofit buildings so they can be a part of saving the planet that they're gonna have to inherit, you know? It's not just the economy that's melting down, the planet is melting down. We can do something about that. Don't tell us that we're broke. Now, these are just a few ideas, okay? just a few. We wanna know your ideas. We want to know your ideas. See, this doesn't work without you, without each and every one of you. This is your movement. We're going to build a people-powered movement that's not based on a single person, that's based on some good principles, people-powered, people-funded, a movement that can never be taken away from you again. Now, here's a plan. Starting on July 5th, which happens to be my son's birthday. Hello, Cabral. Uh, starting on July 5th, we are calling on hundreds of thousands of Americans to submit your best ideas, your very best ideas online, to show how we can help rebuild the American dream. That's the first step. Second step, July 16th and 17th, less than a month away, in every congressional district in America, we are going to be working to get all of us together, gathering in our homes, gathering in our community centers, gathering in coffee shops, wherever y'all meet up, okay, to discuss all these ideas that have gotten turned in and to start sifting through them and to figure out what ideas make sense, where we should start first, and based on that, process, we're going to create a new document that we can build the whole movement off of. We're calling it the contract for the American dream, not the other contract you heard about before. <laughs> the contract for the American dream, we'll vote on it, ratify it, then we're going to march to make it happen. There are so many good ideas out there to make America better. It is up to us to find them and fight for them. Okay.